Welcome back everyone. Let's uh, do some work on FEMAP. We're going to take a look at this problem right here. We're going to have one spring, simple one element setup, apply a force to the end of it, apply some constraints, and we're going to have a discussion about uh, certain property types of elements that we can have in FEMAP. And here we're going to discuss the DOF spring and see what kind of, kind of like a booby trap if you don't know what you're doing. Alright, let's get started. So, open a new page by clicking right here. There you go. And let's see. So, what do I mean uh, by an orphan mesh? So, in industry, a lot of times you are going to be working either with an orphan mesh or with a parent geometry. So, what does an orphan mesh or parent geometry mean? In our previous video, we created this solid right here. This one is a geometry, right? It's a solid. So, we, if we wanted to analyze it, we would mesh it and do the analysis on that. But in industry, sometimes the solid either gets lost or does not get transferred or simply you will receive only a file with the mesh itself without the geometry and you will have to work on it and that's, this would be called working with an orphan mesh that means it does, it means that you do not have access to the geometry so our spring this one we're gonna build it without a parent geometry we just simply gonna create the mesh itself by creating the nodes and the element between it okay another quick side note that I want you guys to remember is where the difference between a node and a point we are in both cases we are talking about a point like this one at the corner of this mesh or geometry but when we say a point we mean that point that is part of this geometry, the solid. When I call it a node, then even though I'm referring to the same point, I'm not saying that it belongs to the geometry, it belongs to the mesh. So nodes belong to the mesh, point belong to the geometry. Let's uh, see over here too, if you visualize it, we can see. See the category geometry? Under it contains points. If you look at the mesh, under it will contain nodes. Okay, so just, uh, I know we use it interchangeably back and forth, but if you want to be accurate about what you're saying, make sure when you refer to the mesh, that's a node, when you refer to the geometry, that's a point. Cool? All right. All right, to get started with our uh, spring, let's go to model property. And over here, we're going to set up what kind of element or property type we're going to be working with. Click this button and line elements. And there are several of them. We're going to be doing a lot of work with these rod, for example, rods, but not right now. In this video, we're going to focus on DOF spring because I'm going to be able to show you guys a mistake that a lot of people can do using this uh, element if you don't pay attention to what's happening. Okay, so do I have spring? Okay, uh, let's call it uh, my uh, DOF spring. There you go, that's gonna be the name of it. And these are the connect to DOF and A and B. Uh, let's put a stiffness. We don't need to define a property for our material here, we can only go and uh, assign a stiffness because the stiffness of a spring already contains all the information that a property would have so let's give it a 10 and that would be it for here close this window and we can we're not gonna pick another property type so you can click cancel okay if you want you can go to the left side of your screen and over here in the uh, model tree you can go to properties and you can find your spring that you just set up if it's closed you can open and verify that it was created if you click on it you can see details of it all right okay if you want to edit it because you entered the wrong uh, data then just enter uh, click on edit and bring back the same window and then you can change it like let's say I want stiffness of 1 instead of 10 and then click OK, and there you go, you changed it. So, eh, we can leave one. So, 
All right, let's, uh, we're not going to start creating some geometry and then mesh it. We're going to uh, start to create our orphan mesh. So that means we're going to create uh, straight up nodes, right? Not going to create points. We're going to go and create nodes. Okay, let's enter some coordinates. Uh, for my first uh, end, I'm going to leave 0, 0. Click OK. And for the second one, I'm going to have it be 1 along the x-axis and click OK for that one. We don't need any more points, so just leave those. Let's uh, click Ctrl Q and have our visualization come up. Visibility. If you don't want, uh, if you don't want to use Ctrl Q, go right here, Ctrl Q, and this is we are creating a mesh right away, right? So we want to visualize our nodes. There you go, one and two. We visualized it. And I'm going to want to see the element as well when I'm going to turn it on or create it. OK, click OK. Now let's go ahead and create our element. We're going to co uh, connect our two nodes straight up with an element. So node and node. So which nodes do I want my element to be created between? So I want one and two. There you have it. And right here, at the property, it's going to give me a list of all the uh, element types that I created. We created only one, so that's the one we have here. Click on it and click OK. Bam. There you go. We have our element with our two nodes. This is basically our um, orphan mesh. This is what we're working with. We don't need another spring, so click Cancel. And we are ready to apply our boundary conditions. Let's apply first some constraints, then some loads. So point one, we're going to put a pin. So go to model uh, constraints right here and nodal. We're going to apply it to a node. Click on node, title, let's say constraints. I'm going to give it that title. You can give it whatever title you want. Pick the node that you want to apply it to. I'm going to pick this one. You can highlight it to make sure you see. Click OK. Pick, um, let's say, le what is it, left side, left, just left. There you go. And we said we're going to do a pin. That means no translation, but rotation is allowed. So we're going to zero out all the translations and click OK. And there you go, it will appear one, two, three. Now we do want to add another constraint, so I'm not going to cancel this window out and I'm going to select this node this time. Click OK and I'm going to give it a name right, right side, right. And over here we're going to apply a force to it, so we want to allow translation in the x direction, but we don't want to allow it in the y or z. So I'm going to zero out ty and tz. Okay. Okay, there you go. And we are done with our constraint, so we can go ahead and cancel this out. Now, next step, let's apply our nodal force here at this end. Go back to modal, modal, model, uh, load, here you go, and we're gonna apply it to uh, the node. So, nodal load. Okay, load, nodal. There you go. So, the title, I don't know, external force. Click OK, select the node at which we're going to apply, OK. Now here's our window where we need to select what kind of force we're going to apply. We, there's several versions, we're just going to simple force, pick a simple force, title, I don't know, force, and uh, we're going to uh, apply it in the x direction and we're going to give it uh, a 10. 10 newtons, I think that's what uh, our problem called for. There you go. That's all we need to do for this problem. Click OK. And asking for the next load. Nope, we don't want to. Also, you can go to the left side to the model tree and you can check your loads that you entered. That's why it's asking always for a name when you enter it. I know sometimes it can be annoying, but if you're working with a big problem, there's a lot of constraints, a lot of nodes, a lot of f loads, all kind of stuff, it will be easier for you to find your uh, 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 
what you're looking for like see here we have left right we can go back to it maybe a right click and edit it or do if other stuff if we need to okay there you go here's our force at the end and at this point we are done with our setup so we can go ahead and start our analysis so model and right here analysis we're gonna add a new title I don't know run one we're gonna pick this one static there are several versions of all kind of uh, analysis types here but we go on for this one with static and click OK we're gonna see all these appear right here and we can go ahead and click analyze it's gonna do its calculations and we're gonna have to look over here this is where the software communicates with us solving using integrated solver come on come on it's just one node you can do it there you go this is the good thing that you need to look for see this word complete and no errors all right that's what the uh, the good news is so if you pop up uh, error pop up error messages you know something went wrong here will show in red that hey check out message window go here go there something went wrong for us everything's good we don't need to worry about it all right here's our uh, spring we pr analyzed it and now we're ready to do post processing that means we're gonna check our results see what we got to do our post processing we can go to view and most two these are the two the most helpful uh, uh, options that you need to keep in mind the select and options okay f5 f6 it depends which one you prefer using click on the f5 right now Keep, leave this one as is over here let's put the form and beam diagram the form and contour data I'm gonna put for the contour we're gonna pick spring axial force let's see that one okay click okay and here you go we have our result displayed I'm gonna also go to view options and post-processing beam diagram labels at peaks leave this one as is apply okay now remember I talked uh, in the beginning about a booby trap here it is so in the beginning remember we when we went to model property and we picked element type we are working with DOF spring okay if you would have picked any other element you would not have this problem so when you work with rods or whatever don't even think about this just keep this in mind if you pick this guy for whatever reason keep this in mind it matters what direction you make your elements between the nodes we went we picked our first node was one second one was two we created from left to right therefore the software does not understand correctly what you want if we've set it up right to left it will understand it correctly again only this type of element does this chaos okay it has its own features and what uh, what it's used for but in case you need to use it for make sure you keep it in mind okay all these you're working with any of these again don't worry about this just keep in mind for this booby trap over here okay all right cancel cancel I'm gonna go ahead and set it up the right way so you can see that uh, it is okay if we do it from the right to left so element DOF spring there you go stiffness one everything stayed the same that's good go to model node we're gonna leave that on zero we're gonna make this one okay cancel oh, let's visualize this I want my no I want my nodes and elements there's no points here just nodes and elements okay there's my two nodes let's set up our element between it so here's the what we did we last time we picked one to two right this time let's do it the other way two see put this one two 
one. One goes here. Okay, let's pick our DOF spring. Okay, there you go. Cancel. Uh, I think we did ev oh no, boundary conditions and load. So constraint on the node. Uh, let's see, boundary condition, uh, load, I mean a, a point node. See, I'm using it back and forth too. So, what is it? Left. We said this was a pin, right? Okay. Then the second boundary condition on this point node. Uh, let's see, right. And here we said we have translation only in the x direction. So these two get zeroed out. And okay. Alright, cancel this one. Let's add our load. Where is it? Load on the node. I'm gonna apply the load. Okay. On this point. Okay. Here's our force window. F. So we said pick the force and this one was what did we say? Ten? I think we did that. Okay, ten. Okay. There it is. Cancelled out. We don't have any other forces. Good. We are ready to do some analysis right here. New. Uh, let's say this one too. Leave uh, number one and static, right? Okay. Analyze right here and let it do its thing. Wait for our complete. Come on. There you go. Boom. Awesome. Now post process it and visualize it. Go to view, visibility. Uh, no, wrong pick. View, select. There you go. Uh, deform, beam diagram, contour. On the contour, pick uh, axials, uh, spring, axials force. Okay, okay. There you go. And I'm gonna visualize the peak as well. Uh, beam diagram, labels at peaks. That one stays. Okay, there you go. What do we see? A nice, beautiful, positive 10, right? Remember here? Look at that. Negative 10, positive 10. All right? So, all right. There you go. I hope we hammer this uh, point home. And in case you need to work with this element right here, DOF spring, make sure you know what's up and pay attention to how you apply it. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. And please like and subscribe.